Hi guys, how are we doing? I hope everybody's fine. I've got three news stories for you today here on Thailand Bound. Happy to report that these three stories have never been read out before, not on my channel anyway, so I hope you're going to enjoy these. The background video that you're going to be looking at was filmed around Jack Jack Market. It's a little bit dated now, it was done just before COVID, but should be enjoyable anyway. Let's not waste time, let's jump into the first of three great stories. Hello, my name is Don and I live in California. I have recently retired and came across your Thailand channel as I now spend a lot of time on YouTube and other sites on the network. As such, I have enjoyed the many stories your listeners have submitted. Your stories have reminded me of a love relationship with a Thai woman. A little background about myself. During my business career in an emerging technology company, I was fortunate to have worked and lived in several countries in Asia, the EU and South America. Early on, as a young man, I lived in Japan and worked with many Japanese companies, which at that time were the masters of the universe and very successful. During my time in Japan, I learnt and appreciated the culture and the way of life in Japan and the Japanese model of business and life behaviour. Upon my return to the USA, I met a beautiful Japanese woman who was attending a US college. Since I spent time in Japan, could speak elementary level Japanese and loved the food and knew the culture, this advantage allowed me to enter into a courtship of several years resulting in a marriage and having a child together. Okay, so all was going well early in my career. I had a wonderful wife and an exciting job traveling the world during the early market development of computers and electronic products. As life progressed, things changed and for many reasons. My Japanese wife divorced me after five years of marriage. Here is where my world turned upside down. Living in California, the divorce terms were that I had to split all of my assets as well as child support and alimony. In retrospect, I don't blame my ex-wife for the divorce terms. Her le legal representatives were ruthless to ensure that every nickel I possessed was identified. Moreover, the prolonged divorce review for several years resulted in my personal legal fees being very expensive. So, at the end, I surrendered and agreed to terrible terms. So moving on, I had to reconstruct my life after the divorce to adapt to having only partial child custody and the monthly money transactions to cover assets, divisions and child's and alimony expenses. This adjustment was difficult and financially challenging. Therefore, this life experience resulted in a sincere commitment that I would never marry again. Moving forward, I was lucky to date some lovely ladies. I had a long relationship with some, however, when the marriage question raised, which happened most of the time, I had to decline, which in turn ended the relationship. With middle age approaching, I abandoned dating women who would want marriage. With my new plan, I found a lady companionship very opportunity knocks and fun was foremost. Now, let's move to the circumstances which led me to my interaction with a Thai woman. For several years prior to meeting this Thai woman, who we all call POM, I was spending time in China working with Chinese companies to tool up advanced products for world markets. In China, I dated women who I met in the work environment and I outside. Most importantly, marriage was not going to be a criteria for a relationship short or long term. I enjoyed my time with them and also the food. These women were independent and never asked for money for family or domestic reasons. However, Having fun with these women was not inexpensive. Now, moving to events which led up to my meeting POM, I want to explain that prior to meeting POM, I have never visited Thailand for personal or work-related reasons. Also, not having any interest in visiting Thailand, I was not aware of cultural or women conditions. Therefore, I was blind and naive regarding bar girls, freelancers, etc. and the attachment Thai women have with their families. The night I met Pom, I was staying at my favourite hotel in Hong Kong. For a reference point, this was about a two years before the COVID outbreak. This hotel had a great bar with musical entertainment. The band was a group of Filipino men and women and they were great. 
This bar and hotel lounge attracted women from many countries since visa requirements were minimal at the time. That evening at the bar, I spotted a woman having a drink who was drop dead beautiful. I'm not a shy person, so I made my way to the bar where she was sitting and tried to start a conversation. I learned she was from Thailand, but unfortunately, her English was limited. She said, not to worry, she contacted her friend by phone, and in about 10 minutes, a beautiful English speaking Thai friend called Pom arrived. Pom spoke in perfect English, noted that she and her girlfriend were in Hong Kong to shop. I, being naive and blinded by the beauty of these women, did not question her explanation. As the night progressed, we partied together until the bar closed. I was happy to pick up the bar tab since I had a great time with both women. At this time, we were all intoxicated and Pom asked if I was staying at the hotel. I said that I was staying at the hotel and they asked if they can stay the night in my room. I thought this was a great idea and we could continue to party with no travel issues. In the room, we continued to have some drinks. The girls put on a strip tease show for me and I was over the top in lust. However, as difficult as it was, since I was not aware if these women were working girls or just having fun, I did not request any aerobics with them. We ended the night and the girls show showered prior to coming to bed. I had two double beds in the room, so I had a bed for myself and the girls shared the other. In the morning, I treated the girls to a top tier breakfast buffet with champagne. We partied after breakfast and I promised Pom that I would contact her to set up a visit to Bangkok to see her. Upon returning home to the USA, I started a video dialogue with Pom and I learned from her that she recently ended a long term relationship with a man in the EU. She noted that he was very generous and provided funding for an apartment unknown to me as to the details. She invited me to visit Bangkok and stay with her. As I said, I'm not married or plan to get married, no steady girlfriends, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to visit Thailand and enjoy a beautiful young woman which normally would be way out of my league in the USA. I planned my trip to Bangkok and upon my arrival, Pom was waiting for me at the gate. She looked beautiful and I was excited to finally be with her. She had a car and we drove to her apartment in a modern high-rise in Bangkok. However, I want to state that the events that occurred upon my arrival and afterwards are similar to the stories many men have shared here before. I will discuss how these events can lead to scams during relationships with beautiful Thai women. In my opinion, Pom has earned a PhD in advanced techniques for extracting money from naive, gullible men who are blinded by attraction. Back to my story. After arriving, I showered, we went out to eat. The conversation flowed smoothly as we reacquainted ourselves and it seemed we had a mutual liking for each other. Upon returning to the apartment, we showered together, then moved on to a brief aerobic session. I was blown away by Pom's skills and found myself increasingly drawn to her charm and allure. I stayed with Pom for 10 days, doing tourist activities and engaging in regular aerobics. By the end of the trip, I was completely hooked on beauty and her performance in the bedroom. Since I had no real knowledge or experience regarding Thai scams, I was open to continuing the relationship. Some of the events that follow include sending money for her air travel to visit me in the USA. She claimed she had a visa and that there would be no entry issues. She also insisted that her travel agent was the most cost-effective way to purchase the tickets. However, upon arrival, she was declined entry due to visa issues and she claimed there was no refund for the unused tickets. I never learned the true cost of the tickets. On my next visit to Bangkok, we visited her parents and family in a rural area. The family dwelling wasn't too bad for the region, but I was surprised to meet her 10-year-old son. Ongoing conversations included Pom's financial needs and she mentioned that if I wanted to replace her long-term boyfriend in the EU, who she claimed was no longer in the picture, I would need to provide financial support. She estimated that 40,000 baht per month would cover her rent, food, other expenses and some money for her parents and child support. 
Naive and still hooked, I agreed to her plan. The initial expenses included costs for a boob job and teeth alignment. Pom couldn't stop asking for money and viewed me as her personal ATM. Over the month, her requests escalated with demands for more things like a new motorbike for her father and a new car. My visits to Bangkok became less enjoyable as I realised that Pom never truly loved me. Eventually, I learned I was just another sponsor, along with her EU lover and, she regular, and her regular clients in Bangkok as well. Although I never planned to marry Pom, the idea of having a beautiful girlfriend in Bangkok had captivated me. Without going into all of the details of her constant money requests, I eventually ended the relationship. I blocked all communication with her, though she continued to try to reach out. I never responded. Now, I've returned to short-term interactions with women. My recommendation that men should not get involved with the Thai women without thoroughly understanding Thai customs and norms regarding all things Thailand. Okay, so uh, he did the right thing. He, he worked things out in the end, but he, he honestly said that he, he had no idea about Thai culture, Thai women. And those women, they go to countries like Korea, Hong Kong, Singapore to make bigger money. Uh, they can make a lot more money than they can in Thailand. But actually, if you meet a Thai girl and she starts asking you for money, um, that's the time to just put your shoes on and run because Thai girls generally, decent Thai girls, they won't ask you for money, okay? It's up to you if you want to show a little bit of support, but a girl demanding 40,000 baht a month is just ridiculous. Okay, let's jump straight into story number two. My name is Jake and this is the story of my first time traveling outside the USA and my first visit to Thailand. I was 37 at the time and I saw a friend of mine posting pictures online with his cute Thai girlfriend in exotic locations around Thailand. Judging by the beauty of the places and his girlfriend, I knew I had to check it out for myself. I reached out to my friend and within a few months I flew to Bangkok. After collecting my bags and stepping into the wall of heat and humidity outside, I immediately took a ta taxi to Pattaya. I stayed at the A LK Metro in the LK Metro area and had a nice little room with a balcony facing the front of the building. It was the end of November and while it wasn't as hot as it can get in Thailand, it was still much hotter compared to Southern California where I'm from. After checking in and showering, I met up with my friend Jude and his girlfriend Dee to explore the LK Metro area. While walking down the soy, Jude mentioned we were going to check out the bar where Dee, her twin sister Nat and their older sister Dang worked. I believe the place is called The Bachelor and as of May 2024, it's still there. I didn't know this at the time, but the bar was a go-go bar filled with girls and the three ladies I had already met were all bar girls. I was a bit surprised considering I had no idea and my friend hadn't mentioned it before the, my trip. No worries though, and no judgement from me. I decided to just roll with it and see where the night would take us. After some thought and a few alcoholic beverages, I began to see the light and oh, what a bright light it was. That night at the club, I think the two of or three sisters were working, each wearing numbers ready for selection. The older sister, Dang, was the hottest of the bunch with a gorgeous face, a large top and a shapely body. I took my time choosing, but ultimately, I went with Dang. Dee's twin sister, Nat, was also very attractive, but I figured it would be a bit awkward if I chose my buddy's fiance's twin. I decided to take Dang out of the bar, and the four of us left to explore Walking Street. There was a little drama between my buddy and Dang when she told me she was charging 5,000 baht for a long time, meaning I'd have her for both the night and the morning. I guess my friend expected her to give me a deal or something, but I was happy to pay for several reasons. Anyway, we headed out into the night bar hopping and I was in awe of the sheer number of hot Thai girls everywhere. I was also very happy with my new smoking hot Thai companion for the night, even though she didn't speak a word of English. We bounced around Walking Street, hitting up different clubs like the Windmill, Lucifer's and finally ending up at Ibar. I highly recommend the windmill, it's down one of those alleys on Walking Street and I've seen things there that you wouldn't believe if I told you. Dang and I ended up back at my room at LK Metro at around 2am, both ready for a shower and some aerobics. The aerobics were great, she was stunning to look at. 
We slept well and repeated the aerobics first thing in the morning. That day, my buddy and his fiancée were heading to Cambodia to take care of some important paperwork she needed before the wedding. I was going to be on my own for a few days, but I had a general idea of how to get around and how things worked with the ladies. Using a translator app, Dang asked if I wanted her to stay with me for a few more days at a rate of 5,000 baht per day. Even though she was stunning, I was well aware of the beautiful pleasures to be found around town. I politely turned her down, explaining that I wanted to experience many things during my two-week stay. With some advice from my friend Jude, I got on Tinder, Scout and Badoo to find a genuine girl. Once I logged in, I was flooded with messages from regular girls, ladyboys and freelancers. It was unreal how many messages I received. Back home, I'd be lucky to match with one out of 50 women, and even luckier to get a message from that match. I quickly realised I had the world at my fingertips when it came to beautiful girls. Although I wasn't originally looking for working girls with so many super cute and hot options at only 1,000 baht each, the beast in me took over. Did I mention they make house calls too? Wow, what an experience. One day I had three d girls come over and the next day I was with four ladyboys. I didn't know I could manage so much in one day at 37 years of age. Of course, once you do a little business with any of these lovely ladies, you exchange line IDs so you can call them over any time. This will be important later in the story. A few days went by on my own and I spent most of the time walking around taking motorbike taxis to the Big Buddha on the Hill, getting massages, eating street food, hooking up with cute cut Thai girls and drinking beer with ice. Beer with ice was a first for me, but once you go there, you'll understand. I also hung out with an expat friend of mine, a buddy named Gary. He had been living in Thailand for years and took me around on his scooter to some school, uh, cool spots. One place that stood out was a nice spot with a big buffet of food and in the next room there was a group of ladies ready to serve dessert if you catch my drift. In that next room were small rooms and I think the charge was 1,500 baht for everything. It might have been cheaper, my memory is a little fuzzy. A day later, I found a regular girl on Badoo named Ni. Nee. She was just my type, the girl next door, not too hot but super cute, 22 years old. We met for lunch and had a great time together. She spoke English fairly well and had a great sense of humour. We clicked right away and spent the rest of the day and night together. After lunch, we headed to Beach Road and played pool at a beer bar and she was pretty good too. By early evening, we ended up on Walking Street at her auntie's beer bar. Nee liked to drink, and by this point, she was getting pretty drunk. Her aunties even told me I should take her back to my place. I was thinking, you know I've just met Nee today at lunchtime, right? So, it's about 8pm, and as soon as we get back to my room, Nee passes out on the bed. I'm wide awake and thinking, what do I do now? I want to go back into the night to eat, to drink and explore rather than just hit, sitting here waiting for her to wake up. So I head out and I walk around LK Metro and Beach Road for a bit, grab some street food and a couple of beers and eventually I decide to go back to check on me. She's still passed out. So I get an idea of what to do next. Since I'm not getting lucky with me tonight, I decide to text one of the ladyboys I know named Love. I remember my friend telling me that some bars have short time rooms upstairs, so I asked her if she was available and if they had rooms. She said she was working at a bar and confirmed they did have rooms, so she invited me over. Here's a little side note about calling a ladyboy she. I consider myself a straight guy, but I also recognise that things aren't always black and white. Women turn me on, above all else, soft skin, petite figures, feminine qualities, cute bodies and dark hair. That's my type. In Thailand, there are so many gorgeous ladyboys who are what I'd call passable, meaning that they look so much like women that it's hard, if not impossible, to tell they are not real women. If I'm going to date a ladyboy, she has to be hot, passable, petite, feminine and not sound like a dude. Back home, it's really hard to find gorgeous, passable trans girls, so I save it for Thailand. Well, except for one smoking hot trans girl I dated in California for six months. You'd never know she was a trans. 
I met up with Love at her club and had some short time fun upstairs from the bar. Afterwards, I walked around some more, grabbed some chicken satay from a street vendor and eventually made my way back to my room to check on me and go to bed. As I was about to hop into bed, I noticed her side was wet. She had wet the bed. I woke her up to get her out of the wet clothes and into some of my dry clean ones. She was super embarrassed and apologetic and luckily it didn't happen again. I ended up laying down a towel and slept on the wet side so she wouldn't have to. For the next week, we hung out day and night visiting Kolan, exploring Patia, eating, drinking and having a great time together. I was having a dream vacation with this sweet Thai girl and life couldn't have been better at that moment. She never asked me for any money, but she did ask me to buy her a gold necklace with my initial on it. At the time, I wasn't too thrilled about spending the money on jewellery, but I went with the flow and didn't make it a big deal. When my two weeks came to an end, I extended my stay for a few more days to spend more time with Ni. Nee. I really didn't want to go home, but reality eventually hit and I left for California. Once I got back, Ni nee and I stayed in contact daily through text and video calls, which often got pretty steamy. It was fun, but I had no intention of keeping a long distance relationship going for too much longer. A month went by and I asked about the necklace I bought for her. She told me it had broken. I was a little suspicious, but gave her the benefit of the doubt. After four months, she started asking for money and almost every week for things like a new shop in her hometown. When I asked her to send pictures of some kind of proof that she wasn't scamming me, she'd either send grainy photos or nothing at all. Sometimes I sent money, but most of the time I didn't. Eventually, I realized she was just milking me and I broke things off. Over the six months, we stayed in touch after I left Thailand. I ended up sending her around $1,000 at first. I genuinely liked her and I thought she felt the same. But over time, especially after hearing so many stories on your channel and others, I came to see things differently. Looking back, I've realized that even if you meet a normal girl, Thai girl in Thailand, it doesn't mean they're not capable of scamming you. I still have faith in people and believe there are plenty of good Thai women and men to meet there. I'm grateful for my life and understand how fortunate I am, but I also recognize that many people are still struggling and not everyone has the best intentions. Despite my experience, I still love Thailand and plan to return at the end of 2024. My approach now is to continue meeting women on dating apps, but without paying for aerobics. I'll stay away from the clubs and the bar girls, though I might still indulge in a soapy massage once. Most of all, I'm looking forward to enjoying the amazing local food and visiting the beautiful temples. Well, you know what he was saying there about normal Thai girls scamming you, what you've got to remember, he was in Pattaya, okay? And the majority of girls travel to Pattaya to make money. And how do they make money? They make money from foreigners down there. So it's understandable that if you hook up with a girl and she appears to like you and you leave and go back to your country, she's going to tag you along and she's going to try and get money out of you because girls who work in Pattaya, they often have up to a half a dozen sponsors sending the money so I think you know like he started to do at the beginning of the story just enjoy himself he went bar hopping different girls that's the way to go on don't get involved and if you are looking for a, a full-time girlfriend Patty is not always the best place to look uh, because of the reputation maybe another city okay I'm going to read the final story out now uh, I, I actually enjoyed this story a lot and the guy might seem very very naive but he admits himself he was young and he looks back on it now and I'll let you make your own decisions on his story my first trip to Pattaya was 25 years ago and looking back, I was completely clueless. It's funny because if my friends knew how experienced I was then, they would never have stopped teasing me. I arrived in Pattaya at the start of Songkran, though I had no idea what that was at the time, but I soon found out. I took a bus from Bangkok to Pattaya and checked into a small hotel on Soy 8, possibly called the Sun Inn. I can't quite remember being young and new to Thailand, I had only landed in Bangkok and hopped straight on a bus to Pattaya. After checking in, I decided to go for a walk. As I was heading towards Beach Road, a bar girl threw a bucket of cold iced water on my back. I nearly died from the shock. Instinctively, I turned and half ran away as laughter erupted around me and more water came flying my way. 
I had no clue what was going on, but soon discovered I had arrived just at the start of Songkran, the famous water festival in Thailand. This set the tone for my trip. I had a blast with all the water splashing. Back then, there were so many little bars on Beach Road that you couldn't count them all. I met a bar girl named Pim, and I immediately felt an attraction to her. She was lovely, and I couldn't stop thinking about her. I didn't even know what a bar find was. Pim explained that she could be bar find and what that entailed. We spent the night together, and I remember feeling so lucky to be with such a beautiful girl. She was wonderful to me, and we made plans to meet again at her bar later. That whole day, I couldn't stop thinking about her. I was infatuated. However, a combination of daytime drinking and too much sun got the better of me, and I ended up falling asleep in my air-conditioned room in the late afternoon. Remember, this was before mobile phones, so there was no way for her to reach me. When I finally woke up, I was starving. I grabbed some Thai food at the hotel restaurant, and since the bars were open until 2 a.m., I wasn't too worried that it was already around 9:30 p.m. After eating, showering, and getting dressed, I nervously headed to see Pim. I was excited but also anxious. About 25 meters from her bar, I saw her sitting with another man. I hesitated and stopped. I didn't feel confident enough to approach her while she was with someone else, so I ducked into another bar where I could watch her without being seen. After a drink or two, I saw her leave the guy and go behind the bar to do something. Thinking the coast was clear, I walked over, happy to see her. But as I got closer, she glanced at me with a half smile, then looked at the other guy. At that exact moment, she grabbed her handbag, took the man's hand, and walked off with him, glancing back at me. What a mess I was! I quickly downed my drink, paid the bill, and walked across Beach Road to the darkened beach. And here's the part where my friends would be in stitches. I sat there and sobbed my heart out. I was absolutely devastated, crying my eyes out over a girl I had just met. I soon couldn't get her out of my mind. Soon after that night, I left Pattaya, taking a bus to Bangkok and then a night bus to Chiang Mai. I spent three days on a safari in the hills, trying to clear my head. I had just under three weeks in Thailand on that first trip, and it was a whirlwind of emotions. My mind was blown in so many ways, and my heart was pulled in all directions. I did meet another girl named Dang, and we spent a few days together. But she was a poor replacement for Pim. I never saw either of them again. I've been going to Thailand for 30 years now, though mainly to Phuket and Hua Hin. I've rarely returned to Pattaya except for the occasional short trip from Bangkok. It's easy to fall in love with a beautiful girl. But with experience, you begin to see the game for what it is. I laugh now, thinking about myself all those years ago, sitting on the beach and sobbing over Pim. If my friends had seen me then, they would have never let me live it down. Nowadays, I have nothing but respect for the women working in the bars. It's a tough life, and they deserve a hundred percent respect. These days, if I ever bar find a girl and her attitude changes, if she goes from being nice at the bar to being pushy or greedy in my room, I ask her to leave immediately. It's just not worth the grief. I think that's a great story. Often, when I read these stories out, some of the comments that come back, they say things like, "Oh, the guy was a simp. What a stupid guy!" or "He was brainless." But you got to remember, a lot of these guys who go to Thailand when they're quite young, like this guy did uh, 30 years ago or something like that, and. It's so easy to get captivated by these girls in the bars. They know what they're doing. They're well instructed by their peers, and you know it, it's very, very easy. It happens to a lot of guys, and I think most of the guys it happens to, if they don't get burnt too badly, then they do recover from it, and uh, they become, as he put it, experts in the game. So I hope you enjoyed those three stories. Uh, if you're sitting on a story, please send it in. I'll change your names. I'll make it anonymous as always, and you two can have your story read out right here on Thailand Bound. But that's it for this week. Thanks. For joining me, and I'll be back next Saturday with some more stories.